Clutch from Mountain Slater Garage. Today we're going to be talking about maintenance on the P85 clutch for the Polaris has on their snowmobiles. They've been using this clutch for a number of years, probably a couple of decades, with very small little changes over that time frame. Um, it's been a really good clutch. It works really well. I mean, people have modified these to put on Articats. They've modified them over the years to put on Skidoo's. So it's been a really great clutch. It's lightweight. Parts are plentiful, pretty inexpensive. Polaris finally came out with a brand new clutch this year on the turbo sled. So it'll be interesting to see how that works compared to this. But this has been a great clutch. It does kind of have one complaint though that I see people complain about and that I've experienced. It wears fairly quickly without some basic maintenance and periodic cleaning. So we're just kind of go over the parts that wear the most that's easiest for you to do. Um, this whole clutch, you can take the whole thing apart, but it's quite a bit more involved to uh, replace some of the other parts in it. The part that wears the most is the bushing that goes through the flyweight. And the flyweight on this clutch goes in right here. This little shaft goes in. So the flyweight right here, there's a bushing that goes through right there. And when this flyweight pivots in the clutch here, it pivots back and forth like this on this clutch. And this bushing here in this pivot point it wears out fairly quickly, and that's going to cause, cause your clutching not to work as well as it should. The performance is going to be off on tra transferring power through your belt, through your clutch system. You know, this, this weight's pretty easy to get to. It just got this bolt in it. It's got an Allen head on one end, and then this little teeny nut on the other. This is pretty easy clutch to take apart. There's a spring in this clutch that goes right there with this cover that goes on here. And this, it's got, it's spring-loaded, so be careful when you take this apart. Don't let this thing all of a sudden spring back and hit you in the head. There's a clutch compressor you can use to take this apart, which I highly recommend. You can even do this to where you're replacing or cleaning or checking these weights with this on the machine without having to pull it off. Um, it's pretty simple. I'm just going to show you here kind of how I do it real quick, pulling the clutch cover off one of these other ones. Now, the interesting thing about these bolts, a lot of the bolts on your machine are metric. This is actually a standard bolt that's a 3 8 I've actually loosened all of these a little bit, so they'll probably be easy to take off. So what I'm going to do... Now, as you can see, I, I took out these four, and I left that one and that one are pretty much straight across from each other. And so the best thing to do, if you're not going to have one of the spring compressors to do this, have someone hold this like this and not let it, so the spring pop this apart when you take these two last bolts out. I've done this enough, I know how to do it with just one hand. So, I, so I'll come in here, I'll grip it, not letting this come apart. I'll loosen that one. Now I'll kind of let it, the spring pressure, see how it's coming apart here? I've kind of let the spring pressure come up on the bolt a little bit. Now I'm just going to hold a little bit more. Now both these bolts are completely out. I'm just going to put both hands on it, kind of let the spring release it just like that then our cover's off. Pretty simple to do. Like I said, if you don't have a clutch puller to pull this off your machine, you can do this with it on the machine. I've done it a number of times to clay it, to change um, weights out in the field. Pretty easy to do uh, if you don't want to have to pull this off. It's nice to get it off to really check all the other clearances in it, all the other bushings in it, just to see how loose everything is. But you don't have to. A little easier to clean it if it's off your machine as well. So once we have this to this point, so there is a bushing right in here, and that rides on this shaft right here. As the clutch shifts this and out, this goes in and out like this. And you just kind of want to rock this to see how much plays in it. This shouldn't have very much, and this doesn't wear that much. I don't know if I've really ever seen one of these bushings wear out. This, this bushing, it's almost probably three quarters of an inch wide. On the older clutches, it used to maybe be half that, so that bushing used to wear a little bit more on the older clutches. But it is replaceable. There's a snap ring in it right there, and I'm pretty sure you can just buy that um, bushing if you need to buy one, but that bushing usually isn't bad. There's another bushing. This, this is called the stationary sheet. This piece here that comes with this snout, and this is the part that bolts in your crankshaft. This never really moves. This is called the moving sheet, this piece right here, and that's the this part that moves in and out. That's the movable sheath, stationary sheath. We also want to look at, right in here there's these rollers, and there's a bush, there's a washer on that side of it, washer on that side of it. You want to just look at those, inspect those rollers, Make sure they're not really worn or grooved, and make sure they spin freely. That's another thing you want to look at to make sure that is in good working condition in your clutch. There's another bushing right there and right there. 
And as your movable sheath moves in and out like this, that bushing rides on that surface there and that surface there. And you've got six of those towers. You've got two there, two there, and two there where there's those six of those bushings. What you want to do is just make sure the rocking back and forth, the back and forth like this in between those towers is tight. And this is really quite tight on this clutch. This clutch probably has, I think it's got about 500 miles on it. So all the bushings are really tight. The one, there's one other bushing. It's where the movable sheave, this pierce here, slides back and forth across this surface. There's a bushing in there too. So you just kind of want to rock this and just make sure there's not a ton of play. There's going to be a little bit of play um, just because that has to have enough room that when this heats up, it's not going to catch. But this should move really smoothly. You shouldn't have a ton of playing it back and back and forth this way. You know, the towers here against the spider or with the sheath right here where the bushing is right there. So those are the things you want to look for. Then you can also inspect your sheath surfaces for cracks, for grooves, for any damage uh, to it. But this one looks actually very good. We're going to go in and move, remove the weights now and we'll show you how to replace the bushings. And then we'll come back, we'll put this back together and put it on the machine. Okay, now when we want to take this out, this is also a 3 8 inch bolt right here. One of the things you have to notice, this bolt, is you can't get a box end wrench around it, which is really unfortunate because it's too tight right here against the tower to get a wrench around it. And I usually can't get a socket around it either. So you got to kind of use an open end wrench like that to get on there. And then I just have another Allen wrench that fits on and you just unscrew that, push the shaft out, have the bolt. Now, when you get these weights out, you want to inspect this surface here. Make sure it's really smooth, that there's no grooves in it, um, no flat spots, um, no little pits or anything in it. That's one thing you want to inspect. The other thing you want to inspect is the shaft of the bolt you took out. Just make sure there's no grooves in it and you can rub your fingers around it like this. Just make sure it's nice and smooth and there's no edges or anything on that bolt. Because if that's worn, it can get worn and uh, there's a sharp edge on it or something right there. You feel anything and it's just not completely smooth. You want to replace this. Then the other thing, like I said, that, that wears on these is this, this shaft will wear. You can kind of see I got a little bit of play in my bolt, but it's not bad. That's almost, when I replace it, it's going to be a little bit tighter. I'll show you one that's worn. Here's one that's quite worn. You can see that moves quite a bit in a lot of play. Now reason, and here's another one when you want to inspect these. I mean, this is one that's really bad on um, the surface. You can just see that weight is just completely gnarled. What happened on this is probably that roller I showed you froze up and just kept digging and digging into this until the roller broke and caused that damage to your weight. And uh, here's another one, kind of the same thing happened to this one, roller damage across there. But you have any weights that look like that, just terrible weight needs to be thrown away. Okay, now there's two little tools I found to punch these bushings out. There's this little one. What happens is this goes in here like this. You put that on like that and then you pound this. I will show you how this works. That just pounds your bushing out, just like that. See the bushing is out now. I can replace that with a new one, put that back in. Okay, now I buy these um, new bushings. It comes in three in a pack. These are like 20 bucks for three of them. EPI Performance, there's a number of companies that make these that you can find online. So like I said, about 20 bucks for three of them. Some are a little bit more made out of different material. Some are a little bit less, but you're standardly, you're gonna pay about 20 bucks for three of them. So I'm gonna pull this one out. We're just gonna use our little tool again. Like we said, we're gonna put that part in there. This is, punch our old bushing out. And then we're going to put our, our new bushing on the tool just like that. That just slips right on there. And then we don't need to use this part to install it. We can just have it on the flat surface. Just like that. New, new bushing in there. It's pre pretty tight at first, but it'll loosen up a little bit and your weight will move a little bit better once this gets put on. Now you just put this stuff back in the same way you took it apart. You know, the weight goes down in there. This Allen headed bolt goes through like that. Then you get your little nut, 
put him on this side and tighten it down. Now the reason why these bushings were out, your clutch is spinning like this. What's happening when this weight is out like this, it's the motor's trying to spin against the weight. So if the weight's sitting like this and the clutch is spinning, this weight's trying to move like this and uh, resist the forward motion of the clutch. So it's always going to wear the bushing so the weight's going to be cockeyed like this. So you might pull some of your weights out and um, when they, they, will, they will have play like this to where they're cockeyed like that. So what will happen in here, if this weight, instead of being straight like this, if it's cockeyed like this, it's going to put more pressure. I feel like if it's cockeyed like this, I'm going to over exaggerate it so you can see if it's cockeyed like that. The edge is going to be catching the, the roller instead of the flat surface of this, and it's going to put a lot more pressure on your roller, and you're probably going to have roller failure. And also, if it gets cockeyed like that, the edge of this weight can wear into the back side of the clutch right here and, and put a groove in it here. And so there's a number of things that it can do if your weights, those little bushings, those weight bushings get uh, too worn. So you really want to check these probably once a year, maybe every five, 600 miles, just to see if your weight bushings are good. Because I've seen them go out in five or 600 miles. It's a good, nice thing to check and uh, replace once in a while if it needs it. So we're going to go ahead, we're going to put this back together and put it back on the machine. Go. Okay, now I've got our clutch all the way back together. We've put a new spring in it, because if you're going to go to all the hassle of taking this apart, it's not a bad idea to replace the spring while you're in there, because the coils lose their ability to have the same tension that they did once they were new, and they'll slowly wear like any other part and not perform as well as they did when, when they're new. So it's not a bad idea to, to replace the spring. Spring's usually $30 to $40, not very expensive in the whole grand scheme of things if you want your snowmobile to perform optimally throughout the year. Like we said, the bushings are pretty inexpensive to replace. You know, you get this pack of bushings like this. This is on Amazon. You get a pack of three for $22. Be careful when you buy this stuff, because it shows six here, but it actually says a pack of three. Um, you're not going to get six. And it's like that with a lot of these that I've noticed. These are the the bushing uh, through bolts, the pivot bolts. You can also get these through EPI, the same as the clutch weight bushings. Um, and remember, these are, even though it's showing three, $14 each. So remember, if you're going to buy these, this is actually on eBay. I couldn't find these on Amazon. But the, even though it's showing three, you're going to have to buy one for each that's worn. And then the last thing, this is also on eBay. The starting line products, cam arm bushing tool removal. It's this little tool we use to pull our little bushings out of our flyweights. Um, you can order this. This is sold at a number of different places on the internet. You can order it straight from SLP. SLP also sells springs. They also sell the bushings. You can buy everything from SLP if you want to just all get it from one place. Go to your local dealer and try and buy this stuff. It's not very expensive stuff. You're not going to save much ordering it on the internet. Gives your local dealer, sees your face, knows who you are, and uh, buying your parts from them is going to keep them in business, especially if they're a good dealer. It's good to show them our business and our support when we can buy this stuff straight from them. So there's a couple more things I want to mention. If you're looking through the Polaris service manual, you'll notice a couple of things. So all these little bushings on this clutch, the bushing we replaced in the flyweight, the bushing that goes on the movable sheath, these little bushings that go on the spider, the bushing that goes here on the faceplate. Service manual says those are self-lubricating bushings, so you should never put any lubrication on any part of this clutch. That's one little key feature. Um, the other key feature you want to mention, if you're wanting to replace flyweight bushings like we talked about in this video, it says in the service manual, flyweight bushing is not replaceable. If flyweight bushing is damaged, the flyweight pin and nut will need to be replaced. So if you go to a Polaris dealership and you're looking for these little bushings that we replace, you're not going to be able to find it as a Polaris part. You can pretty much buy every part in this clutch, all these little buttons, shims, rollers, everything else, all the other bushings in this clutch, but Polaris doesn't sell us one little bushing for the flyweight. They want you to buy the whole flyweight. Retail price on the flyweights from the Polaris is about $35. So for three of them, it's going to cost you a sales tax, maybe $120. Whereas if you buy this little bag of three bushings, th those are about 20 bucks. You buy this SLP tool to take them out, that's about 15 bucks. So the price of one flyweight, 
you can replace all your bushings and plus you've got the tool for when you want to do it again so it's going to be less expensive the next time so you can kind of decide which way you want to do it if your bushings are worn and your fly weights are still good and there's no damage to the actual metal on them you can replace just the bushings or you can do the fly weights now one other thing i wanted to show you <clears throat> is when you put the fly weight back in there's this bolt that goes through the fly weight it's supposed to according to the service manual go in if your clutch is on the machine like this, it's supposed to go in from this direction to that direction, and the nut's supposed to go on this side, right right there. So that, that's the way they say it's supposed to go in. They don't give a reason why it's supposed to go in that way. The Allen head is supposed to be on this, which is on the, the downward side of rotation. The nut's supposed to be on the upward side of rotation. That's one other thing they mentioned in the service manual if you don't have it. But anyway, so we've gone through the video last time of uh, belt deflection. That's a super easy thing to check and make sure is in proper working order uh, that keep your clutch system transferring power from the engine through the drivetrain optimally. Clutch weight bushings is another thing to maintain on your snowmobile, your player snowmobile clutch to make sure your clutches are working optimally for your riding. And the next thing we're gonna do is actual the alignment of the first primary secondary clutch. So you remember you have this clutch here, you've got another clutch back here. These have to be in perfect alignment for them to work properly for the belt to transfer power from this clutch to the secondary clutch and also for proper belt wear. If your clutches aren't aligned properly, your belt's going to wear out a lot quicker and it's going to burn through it a lot quicker. So join us next time, probably be next week for the clutch alignment video. We'll go through that whole process and through these three videos, belt deflection video, the flyweight video, and the alignment video, three super easy things you can do in your garage at home. Even if you're not a trained, certified mechanic, keep your Polaris running perfect through the whole year. And we'll see you next time in Mountain Sledder Garage.